So hello, so welcome to the YBNB show. And uh, this one is uh, the unofficial title until Annabelle and I come up with a formal title is going to be the one with the suits and you'll find out why in a minute. Um, but uh, it's myself and Annabelle having our usual chit chat, which uh, many of you say is entertaining. But um, importantly, we have a guest for the first time in a long time, Caroline Andrew. And Caroline is very kindly agreed to um, join us. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about... Uh, uh, you know, uh, the area of her work. But um, let me first of all let you know that she is um, one of the very few, and in our, our opinion, the absolute best um, female tailors on Savile Row. And uh, one of the very few females to do that job in the first place. But secondly, I think the only one who actually makes suits, tailored suits for couples and, you know, men and women. Um, and like I say, you know, from our, in our opinion, the absolute best. And here we are sporting um, some examples of her wonderful work. So, yeah, hello. so that's why it's Hi. the one with the suits. And that's why it's the one with the suits. Yeah. So <laughs> Thank love. you very much for having me, Annabelle and Angela. Um, and you both look amazing. You're, yeah, there's, I've done a lot of sort of father and son suits and wife and husband and actually mother and daughter. It's like, yeah. Just, just you guys so far. Maybe oh, a couple of others, but yeah, the new power couple. Mother yeah, and daughter. <laughs> definitely. You could, do, in fact, do all sorts of generations, and yeah. that's the first thing, really. And we're going to talk about a lot of things to do with women and careers, and um, you know, but business suits is is actually sort of part of that uh, because one of the things that I've we've not had these very long, and it's actually thirty degrees or something outside at the moment, isn't it? And we really didn't <laughs> think that it was going to be that weather when we chose these fabrics because you had so many fabrics, beautiful fabrics mm. to choose from. You call them. Cloths, I think. Do you? Yeah, cloths. Yeah, yeah cloth books. Yeah. <laughs> so we, so we chose these. We love, you know, the the colours, and then you um, helped us select the linings and everything, and yeah. the shapes, and um, there were so many options, and it was so mm. lovely to go through the whole process. Um, but I think that uh, I'm being really surprised at how versatile they are. You know, very, very hot out, but it's been cold as well in the last week or so. Yeah. And Annabelle and I each have worn these. Probably five times already. Yeah, in the space of about eight days. Yeah, so yeah. It shows you how them. versatile they are along with the um, varying English weather. Yeah, I've worn them in business mm. meetings. We wore them to um networking event where I was on my feet the whole day with mm -hmm. flats. Um, wore them with some really, you know, sky high YSL um, sandals and... Yeah, I mean, you know, with the roll necks on, with bodies on, with... So They've been to dates, parties, <laughs> business meetings. And everybody has commented on how amazing they look. Yeah. So not only do you feel great and confident, but people really notice as well. So um, I think I always thought that the the suit was sort of behind me because now I wasn't, you know, in a formal sort of office environment. But actually, it's not the case. Um, so anyway, we'll talk more about suits, but let's find out a bit more about you, first of all. Um, tell us how you got into this, you know, this business and how you yeah. ended up where you are. So I studied bespoke tailoring at London College of Fashion. Uh, I started doing a foundation diploma, which is a year in art and design, which you have to do to as a kind of access into any creative BAs. Um, so I specialised in menswear. And then in the final term of that, I got offered a place on bespoke tailoring or menswear design. Um, and, and why did you go for menswear? Was it because that was the traditional route for bespoke tailoring? Or? So I went, so I actually did the bespoke tailoring degree because it was more a bit more practical. But oh, okay. they, so the menswear design was more designing and I really enjoyed uh, making. The women's wear, there was, so women's wear design was a bit different and it was very competitive and cutthroat. And I... Just, I really like the feeling of menswear. I don't know, working with men, which I'll complain about a lot now. <laughs> um, but at the time, it, it seemed like much more straightforward than working with with women, which well, uh, men yeah, are. I think which you know. A, I mean, as an aside, men can be I've got two men over there, really. But you know, they <laughs> we are love working with you guys. Yeah, they are um, very straightforward men in that they yeah. say what they mean, don't they? If they yeah. say, um, "Oh, I want it like this," or "I can't do it Tuesday. I can do it Wednesday," or whatever. Like that's really what it means, isn't it? Whereas we're a bit more complex as as women, so we don't quite mm. say what we mean. So maybe that we change sort of, our mind a little bit more. Probably. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, maybe that sort of spills over into fashion and design. Maybe that's why they're more straightforward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I so I did bespoke tailoring, and then um, I'd get calls. So the, our sort of tutor would would give us a call and say, you know, oh Burberry have got their show next week, so they really need help. 
um, who wants to go? So we'd all, so there'd be a group of us who would go and we'd, we'd be like changing buttons for the trench coats, you know, a couple of nights before the show. Um, and then the head of design came and came to see us all. And it was probably like, there were probably 20 of us at sort of, I don't know, 3 PM. And by 3 AM, um, there was maybe two or three of us left. And I remember I was working on like a white, um, pleather kind of trench coat and at this point it was just at the beginning of the course so I hadn't really got the handle of using a thimble and my finger was bleeding so badly because I'd been like sewing these buttons on for about 12 hours and I was like panicking because I didn't want it to get on this white beautiful white kind of um uh so pleather is like leather and yeah, plastic combined, yeah, um, I suppose, yeah. what was it it was um Oh, what's the what's the shiny leather? Patent. Patent. It was oh. like a pay, it was a kind of patent pleather kind of um trench coat. And then she so she came in and she was like, You and come to my office. So I was like, Oh crap, I've clearly bled all <laughs> yeah. over something. And she said anyway, she was like, you know, what are you doing for the next three months? We want you here, we want you to do an internship. So obviously I was probably eighteen at the time, nineteen. And so I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, and that was it. Like being in London, I had a very different university experience to lots of friends who went to Leeds and Bristol. Yeah. And, um, just, yeah, just did a lot of partying and mm. made a lot of friends and all sorts. Mine was a bit different. So I thought, well, I'm just going to work for for as much as I like do get as much experience. And um, Burberry was my first sort of in. And I was so excited. It was a huge institution. Um, and, and I loved it. And so from from then on, I would do a lot of work experience because you don't get paid. So I thought, well, you might as well yeah, do it whilst you're, you know, um, knee deep in student debt and like, struggling mm, anyway. Yeah. Just, you know, be taken a far to job um, as soon as but possible. But getting all that experience. Yeah. Because yeah. um, we yeah. used to do a series called I Want to Be A. I, some listeners might know about this, but we had a podcast series called I Want to Be A where I interviewed people from every different industry that I could think of um, and asked them what it was like to do that job. But um, we never had a tailor on there. I don't never. think. Never. We had a few people in fashion, like merchandising and yeah. stuff, but never tailor. No. So mm. it's really interesting, actually, to talk to you about that sort of journey. And mm. um, from what you're saying, it's like it, you ha it's a labour of love to start it's off intense. with. Yeah. 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 Well, it's all about um, who you know and what you know. Um, oh, so although, although you got picked out of a group, but that sounds like it's because you were... Well, you were there for 3, 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. Like one of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying, yeah. Yeah. So, and and then um, I, I, so I really enjoyed Burberry. I loved it, but there was not too much, like there wasn't that much creative scope because, you know, it's a huge company. And um, so I wanted, so I then went to work for a smaller fashion designer, Jonathan Saunders, um, who's no longer, but he, he was amazing based off. I had some of their clothes. Yeah. yeah. An amazing sort of brown sort of nylon um, uh, dress and jacket by Jonathan Saunders. Yeah. It's really expensive. It was mm -hmm. quite exclusive stuff. Um, but always used to, I used to wear it to work a lot. You probably don't yeah. remember it. it was, um, but really amazing. Yeah. I used to like his stuff. Yeah. yeah. So no, and he's Scottish and he was so much fun and he would just sort of chain smoke um, mm. in, and it was just this like real fashion, like what you could imagine a fashion internship, kind of the devil wears Prada. Yeah. It was a bit like that. Um, which I love that. We all love that film. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. And it was, again, it was the day before the show. So we'd kind of like not sleep two weeks before the show. And it would just probably like three days before you just like, there would be no sleep for 72 hours. Yeah. And I remember, um, Katie Grand, who um, and and Lulu Kennedy of Fashion East, but Katie Grand, she came in she's a stylist and helping Jonathan and her husband sort of was DJing for the show, um, and that we had all of the looks probably I don't know thirty looks pinned on this glass wall, and just like they just she was like this is shit this is and like <laughs> all of them coming down and we were like Jonathan oh, and no. then she leaves and it's all like nicey nicey and then it's suddenly like. <laughs> and then what oh, happened? Yeah. And then we well, you just have to like manically redo everything. Oh, yeah. So it's you know it's um so it's really stressful and you know yeah. you work bloody hard. Yeah. Um, 
So, so then it's like I, fashion and finance they seem to be the two. It is, yeah. <laughs> Similar it's things. Just, yeah. it, it was a lot. And so um, I then sort of, um, in my final year of London College of Fashion doing the BA, bespoke tailoring, I had to create a collection of four suits. And um, it's, it's quite, there's a lot of technical work. And so um, in terms of making a jacket, I had to do everything myself the proper way because it was all picked apart yeah. by the examiners and things. Uh, so I went into a basement of Savile Row because all of the tailors, the coat makers are in the basements of Savile Row. I remember going with some coffees and croissants uh, one Saturday morning and meeting this really lovely um, tailor called Bobby. And I was like, hi, um, can I can I just sit and watch you for a little bit? And he was a bit, but then I had the goodies. So they were kind of like, okay, who's this weird girl? But um, they let me in and that was kind of how I got in there. Um, so then I would watch them and watch what they did. And then they didn't mind. I'd do that every Saturday. And then probably, you know, evenings and the odd morning off I had. So that's like a, a top tip, isn't it? Well, that's it. I Coffee was going to say lesson go a long way. But lesson number <laughs> one, lesson things. number one there is like, because you said something earlier, which I, I didn't necessarily agree with, but people often think this when they say, you know, it's who you know. And, but I actually, I think it isn't that. I think, you know, you obviously you get to know people, but there is a reason for it usually, very often. And that is that you're prepared to do a lot of things that other people are not. So you were sitting there for 12 hours sewing buttons on, even though yeah. your finger was bleeding. And mm -hmm. and then, you you know, so many people would, no way would they be prepared to go and knock on a door with coffee and croissants. Yeah. Far no. too scared they would be well, for a start, not, you, you know, know. Who you know, I didn't know anyone. Exactly. So I had to, you had to, I had to, do to it. knock on doors. And but I people, had to, people and need to know that people. in every in every type of industry that even now where um, people hate going on Instagram, for example, they hate, hate going on Instagram live, they hate speaking, they think they don't look great and things like that. But like if they don't, no one's going to know who they are. If you'd knocked on those doors, yeah. no one would know who you are. You've got to put yourself mm. out there. Yeah, you really got to. So you did that anyway mm. and then you end up learning this stuff and putting the jackets together and then then what happened? Yeah. Um. So then, so I guess... Um, so it's also being in London, I'm not from London, I'm from the Scottish borders. And I've, you know, I've had a great grounding and, a, you know, my parents have given me a moral compass, but then they were very much like, right, off you go. I, ha I didn't have any connections or any sort of mm. like base in London. So, you know, there's this whole you fake it till you make it. And like, I very much did, but but you do make your own luck. And so I just, you know, in London, I'd watch people um if you're if you're not from London and you come to London, it's terrifying and you do just everything's very expensive and you get up to your eyeballs in debt. And you either you you either make London work for you or it will like <laughs> it will just ruin it just takes from you. It can yeah. kind of so actually being here for, for uni, you could kind of see a, you see how people manoeuvre and I'd kind of see older people in professions and whatever and making London work for them and I just thought you know I've got to do this I've got to I've somehow I've got to make this work so I was um you know I worked at Nando's um at the, at the very beginning when I was at London College of Fashion I worked at the Brompton Club which was just taking people's coats and things um which was a which was a members club and all of these you know I was treated <laughs> like not very nice, you know, it's 3am in the morning on a Friday and Saturday by people from different walks of lives. And so I think all of these experiences, it kind of shapes you and, and, um, well, that's, a, yeah, that, you, that, you that's the second to... lesson really, which is I've been doing, um, a lot more work with Joe Dispenza. Some people might know who he is. And one of the things he talks about is, uh, making sure that your inner world um, is greater than your outer world, being greater than your environment, you know, being clear on what it is that you want, not to the nth degree, but just having um, a bigger picture of where, who you are and where you're going and, um, and making that more real than the outer world. Because, you know, if you think you're a great person, you think you're talented and you think that you're going places and then you get treated like, shit, you know, on a Friday night, that could actually make people think, oh, actually I was wrong. I'm not that great. You know, because they, they allow their outer world to be greater than their inner world. So again, that's a really important thing there that I want people to realise is that, you know, you have to just believe yourself without being too 
cheesy, you know, you've got to hold on to that. And there's lots of techniques to do that. You know, part of what we teach on YBNB, we'll weave this in as we go through, is, um, you know, the emotional gym, as I call it, is absolutely critical. And you have to do it every day. You have to remind yourself what it is that you want, how you want to think, um, and who you are and where you're going, regardless of, you know, you can't sort of think that, do that meditation or do that sort of journaling or whatever, and then be immediately knocked off your uh, perch, you know, by a nasty comment or something like that. So making your inner world real, more real is mm. a really important tip. But also, like you say, making the environment work for you. I think yeah, so making many people it work for you. Yeah, definitely. are like, you know, you're on a good track and then there's a recession. There's you get sacked. There's something. Mm. And rather than being like, oh, you know what? It was great, but I can't do it is how you've been of what well, I'm, I'm going to get there one way or another. <laughs> I have to just make it work. Yeah, just wing it. And I think um, as well as not letting like those people get so, to you, um, treating people, you know, as, it sounds so silly, as uh, as you'd like to be treated. Um, and I think that, you know, you can get very far in business and having your own business if you, you know, are nice to people and you can read them. And so, so yeah, working at places, you know, I wish I'd worked at prep because they must see it all. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many people come in there and buy a coffee and leave? And um, yeah. it's, yeah, it's all kind of people skills and you have to have that. To, when I was, uh, my first job was um, at 14 and uh, it, I was washing up and then I was making sandwiches and then I was serving in a baker's and then I worked in a supermarket and then I had my first job in an office making all the teas. And, you know, all of those jobs are very character building. None of them were particularly nice <laughs> at times, but... Yeah, you have to do these things, don't you? Yeah. So then um, yeah. obviously you work for these different companies. Um, and then what sparked this desire in you to want to do it yourself? So I was working for free um, on Savile Row, doing lots of work experience and apprenticeships. Um, and then I was working. So then I was doing working at the Brompton Club and things um, kind of Wednesday to Saturday evenings just taking people's coats and showing them to tables and a bit of hostessing, I guess you call it. Um, and and I wanted to combine the two. I really wanted to get paid for doing something that I wanted to do, yeah. which was tailoring. Um, so I I went to work over in the city, um, the city of London, for a, for a tailor's um, for about six years, which I loved. Um, and, and it just got to a kind of point I ended up running... Um, someone else's business whilst they, um, you know, had lots of holidays and, and I, you know, I wanted to, I was training people and, um, I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do things my way. I Mm. wanted to do more pattern cutting. Um, I wanted to do, you know, women's and men's, um, it's it's difficult when you work for someone else because there were some suppliers who were like, we're not being paid, we can't give you the cloth. And you're like, oh, God, well, that's yeah. not on me. And you just, you kind of um, push came to shove and I... Although that gave you probably a lot of exposure is what it was like running a business. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. I mean, you. I think if you, I always say to myself, you know, pay people and treat people nicely because, yeah. because it's such a people business. You know, my coat makers and trouser makers they'll make for me and I do the pattern cutting and um you know as long as people are paid on time and and you treat them nicely they're happy to help if you have like a wedding emergency or something so treating your your suppliers really well is is obviously a critical thing but Mm. you start this um business and then you obviously have to get clients and uh, a lot of people they want to start their business they're really really good operators so they work for someone else They do a great job like you did for this previous business owner. Um, But it, uh, and then they start their own business and then they realize that, oh, you know, especially sort of people like hairdressers and recruiters I've come across and they're really, really good at doing the job. But then they suddenly start this business and think, oh, hang on a minute. I'm not quite so good at getting new clients and maybe I'm not quite so good at operations. Oh my God. You know, I actually don't like this now. I want to go back to, to actually operating within the business that didn't happen to you. You obviously have thrived. So what, you know, when you started, what were the challenges? How did you get your clients? 
I mean, you now have got two amazing premises. You know, you're based in Mayfair, one of the most most prestigious uh, locations alongside Savile Row. So, I mean, how did you get to to that? Yeah. So I, at the beginning when I started the business, I didn't know, I didn't want to take money off anyone or funding. So I, I, it's, I'm completely self-funded. Um, and I started in my spare room in my flan Vauxhall and some of the old uh, tailors on Savile Row, some of the old men would laugh at me because I'd be like running to the presses or to the cloth merchants. So um, the cloth merchants who are the fabric suppliers, yeah. they have um, fitting, like a couple of fitting rooms and they let sort of like traveling tailors or people who have come into London from outside, say Manchester, use their fitting rooms. Um, so I'd be running, like I'd have tailors, coat makers and trouser makers based on Savile Row and the presser who do the final pressing or buttonhole, um, the ladies who do the buttonholes and finishing and things. So I would always be running around with like 10 suit bags um, from up from my flat in Vauxhall, like around Savile Row. And it was all, it just, so it was working because I had suits. And, and the beauty with um, with suits is, you know, they cost X amount. And then within that, you know, you can pay pay who people who need to be paid and then you have like a little bit left over um a bit of profit and then if you just keep doing that so I did that for about six months um until I had my spare room was bursting with client suits and they were a bit like you know so, so, so how did you find your clients you know because a lot of people can't find clients how did you do that yeah so I was lucky um GDPR hadn't kicked in so I cold called I would just pick up the phone and, you know, go through the um, FSA, the Financial Register and the Law. What did you say? Society. So you just went for um, all the finance and law. Just Yeah, people who wore suits. <laughs> so, you're, so you're this young girl and you ring up and what do you say? Um, so I just make it, I try and make it as, as awful, really con, but, but um, yeah, I put, I've got really good clients who are, who are still, who are still customers and we kind of joke about it because they think it's hilarious. And I think people respect people who try. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I would just try and make, because you have the gatekeepers as well, often yeah. the PAs and things. So you'd have to kind of swerve them and say, Oh yeah, you know you'll you'll know what it's regarding. It's Caroline Andrew, and I. Th- so just some awful, basically fibbing, but just to yeah. get around the gatekeepers, and then just having a pitch of you know how are you doing? Um, don't worry, we haven't spoken before. I can hear you racking your brains, um, and and just you know I'm making suits for some some of your colleagues. Um, you know, don't worry, no one singled you out as saying you're scruffy. It's just to try and make them laugh. A bit laughing, and then, yeah. And then get, and you know, of course, you'd have like the phone hung up on you. And was this sorts, men you were talking of, to or females? So so males, but do you know what was funny? Um, I called a, what I thought was, um, what I thought was a male name, but actually it was a female name, Gunver. She's Norwegian. And um, to this day, she's still a very good client. So I went to see her and I was like, oh shit, it's not, it's not, you know, man. I probably so you realized expected it to be something. a man? Yes. Oh, wow. And then I just had to like carry on um, with the pitch, the, the cold call pitch anyway. Um, and to this day, you know, she's, she's a very senior lady at um, BP or Shell, yeah. one of the sort of managing directors. Um, and and she's a really good client, and so is her. And was this a surprise? Was so. this like you? So you think you're making men's suits, and then suddenly you go and see her, and now you think, oh, I'm going to make a female suit. Is that? Yeah. Hard? Well, it's so because I'd learnt um, how to make male suits. The, the whole sort of female suits had just come about through me being a woman and wearing suits, and then people are like, oh, so I want that. So it, I just sort of had to. So you started to be re- your brand. Retrain, you started to wear because your... there's more. Dark, not in this because it's quite sloppy, but in your suits, there's more dance and shape. So it's yeah. a bit more So would you just make suits for yourself and then for male clients? And then you had women be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Or they'd be like, oh, can you make something for my wife? You know, Lovely. it's a yeah. day or... So nice. Um, so good to be your, so another like organic, thing, that's you're being your brand, thing. you know, but it reminds me, um, the cold calling again, mm-hmm. another thing, you know, and the thing that we just said about don't be, 
you can't be scared. Even if you you can be scared, but you have to push beyond the fear. Because I remember working for BP Oil. It was one of my first jobs. I was a, a graduate trainee and they put me um, as um, a, a salesperson selling fuel oil and bitumen products. And uh, I was only about 21, 22. Annabelle knows this story. And um, so, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't know to be, I didn't know about sizes of companies or anything like that. So I would do exactly like you said. I would actually go through yellow pages at the time. Mm. So I'd end up talking to massive companies. The biggest one was the Metropolitan Police. Obviously, I knew who they were. And I would do exactly the same. And I would say, um, oh, it's so-and-so there. And they would say, who's speaking? And I'd say, it's Angela. So I would never say, oh, and what's it regarding? Um, it's, a, it's a personal matter. Yeah. So and they would say, oh, oh, yeah. oh it's Angela, it's personal like, manager. Oh, okay. oh my God, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. and nine times out of 10, or you would do a different time, you'd do very early or you'd do very late yeah. or you try and sometimes they would pick the phone up and then you would get there and then you, you know, you'd have your pitch and it would have to be something that would differentiate you. And obviously at BP with um, fuel oil and bitching products, there's not that much difference. So I would start to talk about, you know, the ease of delivery and, um, and obviously it would be a female vo female voice. And I used the advantage of being a female to say that I'd come and see them. And so then I would sort of turn up, you know, a, a transport manager's office and there'd be this young girl sort of turning up. And so I'd be a bit of a novelty and mm -hmm. ended up as a result being the top saleswoman um, because I was female, because I wasn't scared of who I would speak to. Um, and because I just managed to sort of find a point of differentiation Um and it sounds like you did exactly the same. And then, mm. you know, if you do enough of that, then all of a sudden you get lucky like you did with your female client and mm. then your your brand as well. And then you're up and running, aren't you? You see, you know, yeah. the, one would think that it was going to be um, a sort of like a saturated market mm. Mm. because there's so many, as you said, old male traditional tailors. And yet here you are, you come along and, and then you start to build this amazing business. Yeah, well, I, I think um, people, uh, my customers, my sort of male customers have said, do you know what? Um, some of them have said, I find Savoy quite intimidating. And do I want to be told what to wear by, you know, a 70 year old man who has like his way or the highway? Yeah. Or do I want to come to you who can give me some like, you know, I'd rather like you tell me how to look than a 70 year old man. <laughs> yeah. And like, you'll listen to me and I know you'll take on board my points. Yeah. So it's like this, you know, collaboration. Like I listen to you guys, what, mm -hmm. you know, what you wanted, what you wanted Definitely. to emphasize your waist and the high waisted. Yeah. Trousers so I was and... like lower waist, you were higher waisted. Yeah. We had like little different things that we're interested in, wouldn't we? And, it was and great, similarly, actually. we both loved the shape of your trousers that you were wearing. We were like, oh, yeah, we want this. Yeah. Yeah. With no, the I never would have had turn ups, but then yeah, you were wearing yeah, them exactly. and they're so they're good. Like a nice two inch turn up. Yeah, yeah. really nice. So, um, so that you know, we could talk all day about your history because it's fascinating. You know, when people you talk about how people get get to where they are because it looks like it's overnight. Yeah, but it's yeah. There's a no, lot no, no, that not. goes into I, it. I never took investment. But I think what's brilliant is that some of the things that you shared are things that anybody could do. Doesn't doesn't matter who they are, where they are, whether they've got money, not money, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyone can do those things um, if they're prepared to. Um, so anyway, so you get to where you are and now you've got this client base. So tell us about some of your clients, because obviously we share a client base in a way, not the moment in terms of the same clients, but the same characteristics mm -hmm. um, for many. So just tell us about some of your clients and, you know, how's well we'll go on to how suits make them feel like who's the person that but comes who's the person to you? yeah um so i have i have a lot of word of mouth um which which is a really really lovely position to be in and i've worked very hard to get to that place where i'm not cold calling and sort of bringing people in um mm. directly so i would say i have a lot of um middle-aged male customers who are, you know, they own a private equity firm or they're, they're quite senior in HSBC or UBS or um, Aramco, oil and gas or, in, you know, in the Middle East or something like that. Um, all different shapes and sizes. Obviously, I think when you, yeah, you, you there's a, I have a lot of clients who have, have worked and travelled incredibly hard their whole life. So, mm. Um, their shape changes as they get older and it's just mm. being really um, kind and working with them on that. 
Well, suits are great, aren't they? Because they can really provide such a good sort of structure of the body and hide a multitude of sins. Until, yeah, well, of course, they come to YBNB and then you I was going to say, people they get want six bigger pack. shoulders and we help them create bigger shoulders. Yeah. But you can just do that yeah. with a suit as you well. You can do that with yeah. a suit. Yeah, and we can hide. You kind of, through having a conversation, I can work out what people want to emphasise, what they want to hide. And like there is with the right fabric and the right cut, there's you can do all sorts. Oh, you really can. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, when you look at well, men and women in well-cut suits, they just look fantastic because it brings the waist in, it brings the shoulders out. It makes people look taller. Mm-hmm. Um, but does it tend to be mainly business women or is it all so- sorts of women that that you make suits for? Um, all sorts. So there are lots of business women. Um, I, so, yeah, at clubs. So I did something with um, the Bath and Rackets Club. So that brought in um, some male customers, which was lovely. And then a Jessica McCormick, who's a diamond jewellery designer in um, Mayfair, um, we did, I sort of made her a suit and we're, we're each other's customers. And so um, I was in their newsletter and that bought some some lovely ladies. So I think, and then, you know, going to their houses to do fittings, um, which I do on occasion if, if, you know, it's more convenient for them. Um, and then their husbands are there. So they, so it's all sorts. I mean, I think probably... I have a lot of young female customers who are, you know, the youngest managing director at KKR, which is a private equity firm. Um, she's probably in her like early to mid thirties and lots of like young solicitors or barristers, female, who um, just don't have time to, yeah. you know, go rooting through you know, Chanel or Hermes. And I guess also like having a label for some women isn't, they almost don't want to have yeah. the label. They they want to have, it's too, it's too, yeah, flashy. Because you know, you know Chanel's beautiful, but you know when you see something like yeah. yeah. a Chanel jacket. But I think it gives, so, um, it, it, suits give gravitas to people that are young lawyers and young bankers and things like that. But also though, I think it can be incredibly feminine and, you know, I love the way that you pair your suit with like beautiful jewellery, lovely pendants, um, great shoes, you know, so you can actually make it look really sort of quite sexy and feminine. Doesn't have to be looking like a man, does it? So that's why I think that these are great, these suits, yeah. because it can make you feel, um, as I say, you have gravitas and um, feel that you're there to do business. But equally, you can actually feel really sexy feminine and it can carry it you can come out of an office and you can go to somewhere like mark's club and go striding in and Mm -hmm. feel great still i think um and and i know that some of your clients they're certainly not lawyers and finance people i mean they're you know they're maybe wives of those people or they're you know they're they're in other sorts of industries where you wouldn't expect them to have to wear a suit but they still wear them yeah i know that's true i have um Lots of clients in creative industries, um, wedding, so wedding customers, I guess, because I'm in my early 30s, a lot of my friends or friends of friends are getting married and they tend to be, yeah, whether it's graphic designers or even comedians, um, you name it, they, so they all come and then, and then they love it because people, you know, there is this, I think, slight connotation of a suit being you know, a bit stuffy and a bit boring, mm. but it's so not. But like what you're wearing there, is it linen? Yes. Yeah, yeah and it's so, so cool. Like you can wear it for travelling, you can yeah. go on holiday, mm. you can sort of, like you've got I'm a little black top under. one of the girls going to wear a linen suit to a wedding I'm going to, and it's yeah. like perfect for that. Yeah. Really, no, really lovely. It's so much more comfy. versatile than I think people think of a traditional suit being. And you can do it with, yeah, definitely, you can do it with skirts, shorts, stuff like yes. that as well. yeah. And you were saying that sometimes you do the jacket, but then you do the trousers and you do a dress a dress, mm-hmm. and you would do a skirt. So yeah. like you've got all of these different options. Yeah, no, the whole thing. Like you can, there's so much we can do. Um, it's great. And so having like a jacket, a trouser, a skirt, a dress, it just makes so many more outfits. And so you can wear the mm-hmm. jacket so much more. And I guess actually also coming to you is much less daunting for someone than going and finding their own suit. Because I'm thinking of our clients that, 
a stepping up to a new role or, you know, changing industry, doing something totally different and, or, you know, their, their next version of themselves. Yeah. And they think, okay, well now I need a new look. Where, where on earth do I begin? Yeah. And, you know, we have conversations with them about things, but if you're suddenly in an MD role or more of a leadership role, you do kind of want that helping hand of what is the right thing for me to wear? How can I still feel confident and not like, not like I'm pretending. Yeah. Um, and you know, like you say, like going shopping on your own or with a friend is often probably scarier for them. Well, also you, you can go to somewhere, mm, talk through how so to do everything. Yeah. And you may think, oh, I need to go to Chanel or I yeah. have to go to Gucci or I have to go somewhere like that to get a label. Then you end up spending thousands. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think, you know, value for money wise with your suits is absolutely brilliant. When it still might not you know, fit you properly if you just and go it may into not even Chanel fit you. or something. Yeah. You know? um, and but the, the fabrics aren't, I mean, Chanel fabrics are great, <laughs> but, but in some of the others, like Gucci, you know, it's not, yeah. it's not really wool or silk. It can often be a nylon. Yeah, exactly. Poly. But I also think, you know, a lot of the clients that we work with, they are, um, we work to coach them to get to that next level. Mm. So, um, you know, they, they tend to be in corporates these particular ones and they'll be at, you know, executive director level, for example, they're trying to get to managing director. And one of the things that we do, so we work with them on their body so that they're starting to feel more and more confident. They're changing shape. They want to show their body off a bit more. They don't want to hide it anymore. But, um, and we talk to them a lot about grooming, about hair, about nails and which, you know, is, is really important because then it doesn't matter what you wear to a certain extent, if you, if you're looking groomed, but then we say dress as if you've got that job already you know, don't wait and then get the job, like just dress. And, you know, if you're, even if you're on a zoom call, but you know, certainly if you're in face, you're face to face, um, you know, unfortunately we are very, very visual creatures still. And if someone just strides into a meeting and they've got one of your suits on and, you know, they're dressed for that position, what you'll tend to find is that, you know, the management, they will expect you to be at a certain level. Mm -hmm. And then they suddenly, if they find out that you're not, that you're ED or VP or something, they're like, Hang, why is she not MD? You know, I just thought she was. And uh, just that image and the way that you look can really have a massive impact still, even with, despite everything, despite all of the procedures and, you know, um, methods of promoting someone, still we're very, very visual mm. creatures. And the way that you mm. feel in it, you know, you yeah. feel like more senior person or more confident or well there's whatever. no doubt about it I mean I remember when I went through my own transformation um in sort of 2016 2017 and I used to spend fortunes on clothes because I was doing lots of speeches and stuff in 2016 and um, and I'd put you know I had the tummy roll and I'd put quite a lot of sort of mumsy weight on and all of a sudden I was more I, I was always buying clothes and sort of jackets and thinking, oh, does my bum look bigger than this and sort of pulling it down and all the rest of it. Um, and then suddenly, you know, you transform your body and then you're fit and you're strong and um, and it doesn't quite matter so much. So then you can get something fitted and still feel absolutely great in it, you know. So I think you're, what you do is is for people that either are not the shape they want to be or the shape that they do want to be and it's still going to work for them. Yeah, no, definitely. And I... Yeah. I yeah, I want people to feel as comfortable as possible. So people always say, and no one's, no one's ever happy, regardless of whether they're a size of how they look, six, yeah. 16 or 26 mm. or, you know, hair or whatever. Um, so people always come in apologising, women especially. And you just kind of have to say, you know, come as you are. That's this is absolutely fine. And then, you know, what will be will be. Um, and now I'm just going to send them all to you guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> are men like because, that as well? Or yeah, is it more women? Yeah, and men are a bit sort of apologising. And uh, people would always say, oh, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to lose weight. And so I would often measure a bit tight, a bit tighter. And um, I mean, even I always do it. So, and which, you know, um, but but just natural. And I think it's quite a British thing. We're like always apologising and, you know, not really. It's just, um, so... I, I would often measure tighter, customers a bit tighter with the tape measure or take them, you know, literally and make things smaller. And then they just wouldn't fit because, you know, they, they didn't. And so yeah. um, I just want people to have beautiful clothes that they can wear now. And then if they do change shape, I change the suits mm -hmm. to, to fit them. I take them in. Um, Amazing. Yeah. And do you find you almost get, because we love seeing our clients with their transformations, they suddenly step out and they're like, that's so great. I'm so this, so that. Do you get that when suddenly they've then got their suit on? 
from like coming to you like, oh, I don't know what to do and like what should I wear and how's it going to look all the way through to like strutting that stuff. Yeah, well, what so what I find really great is, you know, male and female customers, they'll often send me a message like six months or a year later and say, oh my God, like this, the the black suit we made or navy or whatever the suit, um, it's got me through so many pictures and every time I wear it, it's like my lucky suit. I have yeah. these great memories. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, for me, it's like perfumes, you know, um, these smells, they're like good and bad smells mm. and you can smell, you know, an X or whatever. Um, but but for suits, you know, people have these really good things happen to them and they'll they'll come back in and share it with me. And and that's really special. Like yeah. I think, yeah, you you can be the best version of yourself. And it's, you know, it's just something as simple as clothes, but people really do stand differently and I think you are taken more seriously in a suit Mm. and people seem to have yeah be their best version and like you said they don't have to be like black pinstripe do they I mean it can be you know quite formal um a plaid like Annabelle's got a bit lighter here or even like white linen or and you had like a red red sort of colored suit on the Mm, other day which is lovely yeah we do everything one of the things I want to ask you is, um, do people have to come in and get measured or can they give you measurements and get it done over Zoom? Because we have a lot of clients that are overseas, you know, Europe, LA, places like that. And they would, I'm sure mm. that they, they love the British brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I did in the pandemic, I did sort of uh, work with some clients, male clients who we, they sort of measured each other whilst they were on Zoom to me. And then they came over here for a final fitting. They were here for a few days so I could do any tweaks and that worked. But yeah. like my preference would be to see, especially if it's women, because mm-hmm. that you need to do more measurements and have a bit more time with them. My preference would be to see them here. But yeah. You can if, if you need it to. Is and especially especially once you've had their measurements once. Zoom. Yeah. Then you can you can do repeats. Yeah, so I make a pattern for every client. So that's yeah. your measurements onto paper. So I'd have like these patterns. So if you said, I'm going to live in America for 10 years, and yeah. you just make me keep make me one every six months, um, I could use the patterns that we've created. And even to change the style a bit, if we spoke about it, we can still use the base pattern. Mm. Yeah. And what's your turnaround? It's pretty quick for us. What's your yeah. normal turnaround? So normal turnaround is 12 weeks. Right. So we, we do you a did it quicker for us though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, no, we did. Very I think buzzing. we did it in sort of six weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, the fabric, yeah. So, so, yeah, if the fabric is on time, um, then, we, yeah, we can, we can do it in kind of eight weeks. But I say 12 just so that I don't let anyone down or overpromise. Mm-hmm. So it's really nice you've sort of taken the mystique out of, um, you know, having a, a tailored Savile Row suit yeah. for a female. Um, and I think the other thing as well, I remember Steve Jobs always used to talk about, you know, he just wears black T-shirt because it takes the decision making out of what to wear. And it is nice when you have outfits like that where you just don't have to think about it. It's like, as you said, it's either a lucky outfit or it's, um, you know, it's just a go to. It's a regular go to. You know, you're always going to feel great in it. You know, it fits you really properly. And we need that, especially when we're in business as well. We need that sort of convenience to grab and then you can have fewer things. And then you can sort of start to add loads of other bits and pieces to them. Speaking of which, you do um, some off the peg stuff, don't you, as well? Yeah. yeah. So in on Kensington Church Street, we have a shop that um, we sort of, I started in the pandemic because I find that most of my customers in Mayfair, um, Savile Row, are um, more business suits and people who sort of come in and... Um, a time poor and so I work with them that way and then Kensington Church Street it's it's lovely it's a really sort of pretty street with coffee shops and we're open on a Saturday people go to the farmer's market Mm. so we have um, field jackets and more casual sort of off the peg things that we developed in the pandemic yeah because things shifted a bit yeah (laughs) yeah sartorially yeah and and physically of course yeah do you make shirts and things as well yeah yeah, yeah. so, you so can... we do, um, it's not my main thing. My main sort of thing is suits, but on the side, um, because sometimes my, especially my male customers will come in with like a really ill-fitted shirt and then you've made a great suit. Oh, yeah. So I'll do, um, I'll make shirts, cotton and then silk for women. 
Yeah, because on women, obviously, with your boobs, sometimes like it gapes yeah. open there and things yeah. like that. Like so. buttons, just slightly different yeah. places. Yeah. Brilliant. What about collaborations? Do you collaborate with particular shoemakers or accessories? Or I know you've had a few events with watchmakers and yeah. with um, um, yeah, that's sunglass makers mm. and stuff like that, don't you? So. Um, so I did a collaboration with Anne Dane, who are a watchmaker in Glasgow. So they're the only um, UK British watchmaker who who make everything from scratch up in Glasgow. And they I love their brand and I love what they do. And we got talking, um, and they were like, "Oh my God, you're a woman tailor, and you know you make everything here. It's really cool." Um, and so we we designed a watch. I should have worn it. Just got my whoop on, which will be mm-hmm. impressive. Yeah, you got your whoop, and I've got my aura. Yeah, we're all into that. What's Annabelle wearing? This? She's just intuitive. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, and it's beautiful. So we it was sort of like tailoring in a watch. Um, so they very cleverly used um, various presses to. So in in the suit jacket we have horsehair canvas and body canvas and demet, which is a sort of soft tissue um, that makes sure the horsehair doesn't like itch you or anything. Um, and so they played around with these and, and it's, yeah, really cool. The watch face is like the horse hair. If you turn it, it changes dimension. Um, so it's really clever. And the watches, I think there's a limited run of them and they're going to be on sale in uh, Watches of Switzerland. Ooh, so we're doing a cool. talk to their um, sort of top customers and they're here and in New York, the shops. Um, so, nice. so that's, yeah. that was really, really fun. Yeah. Um, and then I, because I have the shop, it's nice doing, um, I mean, yeah, Anne or Dane and, and it, they have a huge waiting list. It takes three years. If you want to have a watch made, you have right. to sign up to that. Um, and so I love what they do. It's very slow and they don't, you know, people always try and invest and throw money at them and go, you know, I want to watch tomorrow yeah. and I'll give you, you know, I'll invest in your business. And they're like, no, just no thanks. And they keep it really clean and really small so that, you know, they're not compromising on the product and the quality of the product. So I love that. Mm. Um, and and then having the shop, I think it's a really nice opportunity to su- support and to help other businesses and get them out there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Nico, um, he has a sunglasses business. His family run an opticians in Surrey and we were introduced by a mutual um, friend and customer of mine. Um and so he has a little showcase of his sunglasses in the shop, which is lovely. Yeah, it's really nice. Because they go really well with the, the ready to wear. Well, players. I think um, collaborations is the way forward. You know, obviously we've heard now of influencer marketing, but collaborations between businesses where there are very complementary services and where, you know, the, the client base overlaps. You know, for those listening who are thinking about their business, how to build their business, how to get new clients, that is definitely a way forward. But, you know, the the old ways work. The cold yeah. calling works. I think like yeah. on that, as with collaborations, like be, be generous in introducing other people as yeah, well. For because sure. we were obviously kindly introduced by a mutual friend from going to an event mm. and now we're collaborating and things like that. Yeah. But I think so many people are like, oh, no, I... That's my business. Oh, no, oh that's, that's my, my client. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Or oh, that's so my friend. So much can come out of so thinking. Much. Yeah, there'll be you know, there's mutual benefit in all sorts of collaborations. So true. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's it definitely what you put out, you get back. You know, multi times, don't you? Mm. Um, so I'm thinking of wearing, you know, of suits again, and, yeah. <laughs> and other places you could wear them besides just in the office or just running around town and everything. Um, I love that um, evening sort of tuxedo look on women. Mm-hmm. So do you ever do stuff like that? Yeah, all the time. Great. So, um, and I love born. that when you wear like a sort of like a bra top underneath or, yeah, you know, it can really look some fab. Some sort of corset. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Glyndebourne is coming up, which is the opera and... I may I've made two female tuxedos for that. One's oh, a couple. Beautiful. Um so black so or white or both? She had um so she had navy. Yeah. And and then um her partner husband had um black. So really, really lovely. And we did like a beautiful kind of navy satin on the lapel and then a strip down the side of the trousers. Nice. Yeah, oh, gorgeous. Really... I love that in white as well. Mm-hmm. When people wear yeah. white suits, that, that sort of tuxedo look, yeah. Yeah, and for weddings, we do, like, we've done a few 
um, sort of bride um, suits, bridal suits. Yeah. I so sort of after when they change, do you mean? Or No, they got or married. Or actually get married in like a city wedding in, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, you know, some yeah. people get married in jumpsuits. Yeah. So. Yeah, a bit different. So, yeah, there's so many different things you can do. Like even this blazer. Um, I was in France at the weekend at the wedding, at my friend's wedding, and um, I had like a black linen dress on and some wedges on the Friday night and I threw this over and it looked really nice with like a fitted dress and yeah. then a boxy blazer. Um, yeah. So you can break it up. Well, exactly. And you can wear the trousers just with a T-shirt or something. Yeah. Yeah. No, but we're big, we're big fans. And with the way, oh, I love that waistcoat look as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, I think we're... we're Come super fans, we're already talking about, right, okay, what's the next suit? Yeah, we'll be wearing yeah. a suit every single time anyone sees us. <laughs> but, you know, it's <laughs> not for nothing, is it, that, you yeah. know, for, for years and years it's been a tradition amongst men mm-hmm. that, you know, they get four suits a year and they have their tailor from the beginning and it's in the tailor's inherited sort of generation to ge- generation. And But it makes sense, doesn't it, to have these sort of staples in your wardrobe that look sort of great the whole time. So, yeah, mm. yeah I think... Um, we would be, uh, yeah, thoroughly re- recommending and particularly recommending your services having been there. And you make it fun as well. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that, it has I mean, been fun. Yeah. I want to demystify because it's intimidating coming into my the shop, um, St. George Street. It is. You know, you guys, it's like a time warp. Mm-hmm. Nothing has changed for 100 years. So it can be yeah, a bit bell stuffy. rings when you push yeah. the door <laughs> open. And, yeah. And so you have to just make it really fun because I, I don't ever want, people to walk into a shop like pretty woman and feel like intimidated yeah. or uncomfortable like even men yeah. almost men more so because people don't go shopping anymore yeah um so i just you know i have like a chat with people and make them relaxed and yeah. get to know them yeah because yeah. i do find as well like even with my friends there are either people that have always had suits made or always had their clothes made for them or have never ever done it yeah i don't and know that many that people have, have actually for those who yeah. have never done Men, it, even yes. like we were, yeah, it's nice to f- go in somewhere knowing that you're going to feel comfortable, you're going to be walked through it, you're not expected to know anything. No, yeah, And, you know, makes it a more friendly kind of place to, yeah. to go and try. I love the little details yeah. as well, sort of like in yeah. terms of the buttons and do you want the side tabs and where do you want the pockets and, you know, the, 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 the width of like the lapels. Yeah. yeah, it makes it fun. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I can tell just from having a conversation with some clients who who are maybe in the yeah, whatever age, um, who have worked in business their whole life and they have maybe had suits on Savile Road, like they know everything and so they know what they want mm-hmm. and they want you know, they'll only have ten minutes, so you work through that. Or it's someone who I'll start talking about pockets and they'll kind of look at me blankly <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, the, this is where we are. You know, I didn't know, I, I haven't been born into a family of tailors. Like I didn't know what Savile Row was when I was 17. Like it, you know, I didn't know anything about suits and it is, you know, I come, I'm from the Scottish borders, like it's different to London. And yeah. so, you know, who are, Yeah. There's no reason to be like snooty or like make people feel uncomfortable. And so I always make sure that I try and explain as much as possible. And like, you demystify because I it. didn't know mm-hmm. what it was, yeah. you know, whenever. So, well, us, yeah. us um, females, we love a pocket, don't we? Love a pocket. Yeah. If you yeah. ever get a dress with a pocket, I've, it makes You've me got... so happy to have pockets in these. And I can put my phone in there, my keys. <laughs> I don't have to carry absolutely everything in one hand anymore. Yeah, and you've got some secret pockets on the inside. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't. So oh, I didn't, you know. didn't know. Carlos pointed yeah. out to me the other day. Oh, I was like, great. They're like, oh, in like the you know, I was looking for my keys, and obviously I check my trouser pockets, <laughs> Where and are he they? was like, no, 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 they're probably in on your inside pocket. I was like. Oh, I've got an inside pocket. Oh my I didn't god! Know I just I had found more it. Than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. They're, they're, so they're, they're so they're great for like cards, lipsticks, yeah. phones, and they're kind of hidden. So it's, yeah, because I hate yeah, having to take a bag out all the time as well. So to know you can just oh, that's so lovely. I didn't even know yeah. I had that there. using it for everything. Now. Bonus extra. I'm getting like plasters, lipsticks, everything yeah. anyone needs. Yeah. So what else do we want to talk about today? We found out all about your history. Well, we haven't actually found out all about. It. We could talk about it for ages, but we found out with a few little, few little about. business tips. And um, mm-hmm. but I think you know we've really covered 
I think the versatility of a suit, yeah. that you don't have to be a lawyer or a banker to have one, that they don't have to yeah. look like men, that it can be every single type of mm-hmm. product, you know, uh, fabric, that you can wear them out in the evening, you can yeah. wear them to weddings, you can wear but them to events. also to get something tailored for you, you don't have to be feeling your absolute best to start exactly. with. Exactly. So I think so many people you like can with, adjust them after. But like with yeah. clothes, people are always like, no, I want to be this size before I get that outfit or mm. I want to be a certain size. Yeah. Especially if you're paying to get something completely made for you. But I think And people buy you know, you um, off the peg, like don't that. they? And then, you know, they can look lumpy and bumpy just because it doesn't yeah. fit them properly. Not yeah. not you know, because their body shape's not great. It's amazing what something that fits you properly can do for you in terms yeah. of how you look. So I definitely mm. think uh uh we've we've covered that and in terms yeah. of um wearing it in the evenings and stuff i've mm. loved the idea of a tuxedo yeah me too yeah no, you're right i hope i didn't bang on about the lawyers and bankers because um i think for everyone whether you're in between jobs or you know you're you're like a new chapter in your life at any age i think it's really for women i think it's really important and really empowering to have like a well fitting suit mm-hmm. and it can just be like Definitely. a black like stretchy wool crepe or something you know it doesn't have to be a check or something that's too you know because these are like beautiful but you know you don't like you have to have confidence they're not creasing or anything either these fabrics are so good like just a black plain suit or you know a gray flannel or something i think it's so lovely to have Mm -hmm. just a well-fitted suit i think everyone should have one in their wardrobe even if you're thinking you know i'm gonna start going for interviews or i want to start doing this I mean, I'm thinking about our clients, you know, and um, especially the ones because we run a whole variety of different programs, as you know, and um, some people may not know, but we call it Your Body Means Business because we provide a very holistic service. And some people come because they want to change their body. And so then we direct them more to the workouts and the nutrition. And and some people come because they want to achieve something else in their career. Um, But just as a happier side, we get them to work on their body as well. but um, also what we tend to do is we help people with aesthetics. It's not really a program on that, but it is a really key component, you know, in terms of their grooming. We might be talking to them even about things like eyebrows, hairstyle, um, different jewellery, nails, as I said. Um, but we're going to add suits to that advice now um, yeah. because, uh, you know, and, and definitely even in the early days, we were talking to people about colours. And mm-hmm. one of the things that I always used to advise people is if you're now revamping your wardrobe, start to look at your um, outfits in terms of colour blocking. Because, you know, rather than having a multitude of different colours, just go for the same colours if you're having a top jacket, because it just looks more put together. Yeah, everything sort of outfit. is in beige, everything is in black. Yeah. Even if you're in gym clothes or whatever, yeah. it just looks better. Um, and, uh, but we hadn't really sort of, Bit, talk to them about bespoke suits before and now knowing you and knowing you know the the, the um the quality of what you produce and the ease with which you produce it for people um i mean it's just a lovely experience so mm-hmm. certainly we'll be adding that to uh, yeah. our, our uh, list of advice won't we um so thank you very much yeah no, yes, thank it's been you. so Amazing. lovely Hi. it's been so lovely my first podcast L- lovely oh. talking oh, you yeah did well. <laughs> no you really did yeah, yeah you so guys like oh <laughs> You know, I'm just thinking about you, a podcast series that you could do. You know, you could call it Suits or something and everybody like can TV come show. in. Like the TV and everyone could come in in their different suit and sort of talk about where they've worn their suit and the story yeah. of the suit. I mean, actually. That'd be great. It'd be really, yeah, there's all sorts of Then we'll come on yours and talk about all the multitude of things we've done in our suits. Yeah. 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 What's the bet? What's, do you have any highlights from the suit so far? I mean, I um, wore it to an event the other day with Annabelle and uh, we were collaborating with um, some, um, a, a, like a beauty solutions provider, I suppose you'd call it an aesthetics provider, uh, Sadaf Jafari. And uh, so she, what she, she had people lying on, um, you know, on, on the sort of treatment beds and having this thing called M face, which is for anyone who might know about it, it's like a face gym. So it's like a workout for the face. So you could plaster these things on, and it jiggles your face around and everyone sort of then the, the, the plaster's come off and everyone's jawline has gone really tight and they're, they've got high cheekbones and everything. And they're all like, wow, you Amazing. know, so she, what she wanted Annabelle and uh, me to do were to wander around the beds and just sort of talk to people while they're there. Because firstly, it's, you know, it's a 20 minute thing. So they're just sort of 
they're just lying there with nothing really to do. Um, so she wanted us to go around and talk to them and talk to them about our services and what we do. But even that, you know, you have that authority when you're walking around, you know, and people obviously knew that we were part of the organization and I actually felt a bit like a, a doctor or a surgeon walking around, you know. Yeah, it was and so like doing so proper consultations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people were sort of like, well, how many times do I have to have this done? And, you know, I they did it, say we needed a clipboard. Yeah, just to look. it <laughs> immediately gave gravitas to mm. the situation. So that was quite interesting. Even though like we both wore our trainers that day with it as well. Like yeah. we, we were casual as yeah. such, but we looked super smart. Yeah, exactly. And we wore um, them to the arts club the other night, didn't we? We went somewhere. Yeah. For, for drinks and dinner yeah, and um, felt really good in that, you know, and I actually said to Annabelle, I actually feel really great in this. I don't feel like I need to have, you know, a tight dress or whatever to feel feminine and sexy. I felt really good in it. Yeah. So uh, that's two of the places it's been so far. Yeah. And you're comfy and you're warm at the same time. Mm. Like for me, I hate being cold. I was like, yeah. I don't have to wear a dress and be cold. Yeah. I yeah. can wear a suit and still feel great. Yeah, so we've just worn it in so many places. I think that's the thing that I found so surprising that you can wear it all over the place. Well, you wore yours always in France and at a yeah. wedding. Yeah, and, then... and I was trying to save it for for Florence for tomorrow for this kind of work thing, and I I couldn't even wait. <laughs> no, it looks lovely. But yeah, no, it, it is. Um, everyone has lovely memories of the suits, and I think, yeah. People, I often have, I sometimes have female, the odd female customer who'll be like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, I just, the colour or the weight of the fabric. And um, I always know that after they've, you know, gone out and worn the suit a few times, all their friends will be like, oh my God, you look amazing. Yeah. And that always happens. And then I get a call and they'll be like, I want, you know, 10 more in like these different colours. Can can you like, can I come in and have, have a look at more fabric? Yeah. So it's gone from in the fitting being like, I don't know if I'll ever wear this to, you know, just getting so many compliments. And well, that we said the itself. same, didn't we? Yeah. That we want, want one every two I months. Mean, yeah, we must have messaged <laughs> yeah. you like four days afterwards being like, okay, we need six now. Yeah, <laughs> I know, it's so funny. Um, all right, lovely. I'm sure we could talk many, many more times. We probably will we'll get you back when we've got loads more suits to, to, and yeah. suit um, journeys to talk about. But yeah. for now, shall we leave it there? Yeah, we'll leave a link in the um, description to your website and everything so people can for find sure. you. For sure, yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, if anyone needs to get in contact with you, it's carolineandrew.com, isn't it? Dot com, is it? Dot co dot uk. Dot co dot uk. And yeah, LinkedIn, um, sorry, Instagram is Caroline Andrew London. Yeah. And you're based in, uh, give us your address, your addresses again um, in London. So 11 St. George Street in Mayfair and yeah. 109 Kensington Church Street. <laughs> it's a fly. I mean, who is, who is this fly? so good. I know. I can't deal with the fly, sorry. I'll cut that bit. So um, it is sorry. the height of summer, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> 11 St. George Street and then 109 Kensington Church Street. Can they just pop in or do they have to make an appointment with you? So an appointment is better because yeah. I'm often, I have fittings or I'm running around. Um, with fabrics and suits yeah um good. so yeah appointment is better um it's caroline at carolineandrew.co.uk that's my email and oh. um and hopefully we're going to be doing all sorts of work with your clients as well whether they um are the shape they want to be or not you know yeah. because um we work with them on their body shape but like i said you know if they are the sorts of clients that are trying to get ahead in their career then uh we've had some phenomenal success with that with uh, yeah you know people that I've been, you know, they've gone from losing their job and thinking that this is the end of their career through to becoming a top partner on, you know, eight figure bonuses. And um, yeah, you know, we had uh, someone pre the pandemic and she actually thought she was going to lose her her business during uh, during because of COVID. She was in the events and fast forward now and she's quadrupled her turnover and her, her accountant actually said, you know, is this true? Have I read this correctly? Mm -hmm. You've actually quadrupled your turnover and something like trebled her profit, you know. So um, we've we've built up a model of change now, which incorporates both mind and body. And um, it really, really works. You know, it works for people that think that they've plateaued and they never, ever have once we get them to start thinking about yeah. thinking. Or if they just way. think they've hit a wall, yeah. they're really trying to get somewhere and it's just something isn't quite clicking. Yeah. They work with you sometimes for 12 weeks, sometimes yeah. for 12 months, depends on the person and what they're trying to do. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, everything works. 
Yeah. It's amazing. And all of a sudden it all comes together and then they think, you yeah. know, it's coincidence, but it's clearly yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 